You ready? This is the Thirty Nights Halloween. Welcome. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> That's all you're gonna say is just welcome. You want me to take it from there after you say one word? Well, you always go, "Hey, everybody." <laughs> yeah, but you already said welcome, so I was letting you do it. Okay. But hey, everybody! Oh, thanks for mother. coming to the Dune Steves uh, Thirteen Nights of Halloween. I'm Big Anglovich. Hey, you're very drunk, man. It's the it might be the pumpkin spice. The pumpkin cores. Spice. <laughs> pumpkin, pumpkin spice, spice Michelob that you <laughs> yes. he picks up. Um, pumpkin spice schlitz. <laughs> That's right. what I drink. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rich Outfield. My headache is is almost gone, but then you started shouting, "Hey, everybody!" It was your fault, Doctor Nick. It was the kids banging on the door. Let us in. Look, I can see he's breathing. Get him. <laughs> There's someone that's not dead yet in there. Our work is not yet done. <laughs> so you were saying that you're not a fan of, of scary movies. Uh, or maybe not, not a fan, but uh, not a connoisseur, I think is what you said all yeah, those months I don't, ago. Yeah, I don't dislike scary movies. And I've seen a few and I've enjoyed them. But it's not a thing that I s search for, seek after, I guess. When I... S see a commercial for a scary movie, I don't go, oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to see. Yeah, see, I don't really get to do that anymore either. Because no one will see scary movies with me anymore. And so, uh, and they're no fun to see by yourself. Yeah? You know what I'm saying? Well, like see, I used you, to be, when I was younger, I wouldn't see any movie by myself. I wouldn't go to a movie by myself. And I think the first time I did that was like one time in college I went to a movie by myself. And it was weird. I felt weird, but since then I've kind of gotten over that, and I can do that with movies if I want to. Well, see, I never want to. Like the other day I said, hey, can we go see a movie tonight? And uh, I ended up, of course, going to see it by myself because you wouldn't go with me. But, you know, yeah, you, you do have that weird feeling when you go in and you sit by yourself, or you say, one, please. <laughs> But yeah, I don't, I don't. I never liked seeing movies by myself. But I kind of got over that. But I don't know that there's a particular movie that you need to see with a group or not. I didn't realize that. I mean, I guess I understood that being at a comedy with a a group in a theater is generally better than just seeing it in your living room by yourself or something. Yeah, sure. You laugh out loud when you're in a theater full of people whereas you don't when you're sitting in your room you know in your living room by yourself unless it's damn funny you don't laugh out loud it just doesn't happen so well with the horror movies are the same thing yeah it's a communal experience the people over there are getting scared and you somehow pick up on that or you hear they're they're you know some girl screams and then you all laugh to release the tension or whatever uh -huh. I, I don't know. They're, they're, I have noticed that. I went, this is back in college again, um, I went with a couple of folks to see a showing of Friday the 13th uh, right around Halloween time at uh, one of the local theaters. And uh, it was cool because, first of all, it was sold out. I mean, the place was full. It wasn't just two or three people in the theater along with it. Yeah, it was really full showing, and everybody was having a great time with it. You know, they were, like, screaming and laughing and, and all that kind of stuff, and it made it t twice as enjoyable as it would have been had it been, you know, you go to see a movie and there's ten people in the whole audience with you. Yeah, well, like, okay, so so we're, we're on that, and I just thought it would be fun to talk about the scenes in movies that really scared us. One of the last horror movies that I actually saw in the theater was uh, the movie called The Woman in Black uh, that had Daniel Radcliffe in it. It was Hammer came back and was trying to make movies again. And MC Hammer? No. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't aware he'd made movies before. <laughs> well, I think he did like the Adams Family song, didn't he? Was it Hammer Time? And uh, anyhow, the, the 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 woman in black movie is is a, a a ghost story about this dead woman that shows up, 
in this little town. And any time she appears to somebody, a child in the town will die. And uh, she, as far as I know, she wasn't CG or anything like that. She was just like a, a thin, white-faced woman who was dressed in like morning clothes or whatever with a veil. But it was a masterfully done film. I mean, just the tension and the how afraid the characters were. For, it was mostly about this one man who's a lawyer who goes to settle the estate of this house that, you know, his his firm owns. And this is way back in like, you know, the 1910s or 20s or whatever that it takes place in. And he's got this little boy that's depending on him. And so he needs the money and he can't, as scary as it gets, he can't just go home and, and leave. They'd come up with a, a reasonable explanation for why he doesn't just get the hell out of there. You know, he had to tie up the affairs of this house and get the paperwork together or whatever and get home so that, you know, he would have a paycheck for his, his kid. And so this uh, this house is, is just, it's it was haunted in different ways. Like there was this fog that would roll in and then you'd hear voices in the fog, but there'd be no one there. And there was, you know, there were times where something was at the door. There's somebody pounding on the door. And of course, when you go there, there's no one there. And so there was this moment where he hears some sound, and it's a sound of like a horse or some, a horse in distress, making that just terrible noise that a horse makes. I can't Screaming do it, but it's noise. awful. And, and he's in the house and, and he runs out of the house to find out, you know, what's happened to this horse, what's, what, what's wrong. And there's nothing there. And he turns around and the woman is staring through one of the windows in the house. And oh my gosh, she's like every hair on my arms and my neck. And I just straight, straight up, you know, that this there's a woman staring at him. Just this horrible skinny faced corpse woman kind of thing. Oh, it was it was so scary. And it was one of those where I went, ah, and the people around me went, ah, and they were more frightened by me making the noise than... <laughs> By the movie itself, and that's one of the things that's so fun about the horror movie is, you know, the, like I said, it's a chain reaction. That person's fear feeds yours, and somebody being startled, you're startled too. And I, I don't know, it, just, I, it was it was a really scary movie, but it was fun scary. I was so glad I saw it. Yeah, that was probably the scariest movie I had seen in a while. And uh, you know, it, different things scare different people. You know, I, 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 you know, I've talked to other people who've seen it, and they're like, hey. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay, well, that's all right. But, you know, it, something else, something much more special effects driven or something much more slashery or whatever might scare them. But uh, anyway, I, I was wondering, if, if are there any scenes that you can think of that really, really got you, whether it was something you saw as a kid or something you saw as, you know, in college? Or I Like I said, I, I haven't seen a lot of horror movies and... I'm afraid to say any of the scenes that do scare me because, A, I know the one that scared me the most as a kid growing up is one that I've mentioned at least three or four times on this show. I can just sum it up real quick. Cockroaches, creep show. Okay. I can't get over that still. I probably ought to get that movie and just watch it again. I own it if you want to because, borrow it. Because, uh... I bet if I saw it again, I'd be like, oh, pff, that's not awesome anymore. And then I'd be over it and I wouldn't have these nightmares every <laughs> night. But yeah, you know, the the most recent scary movie that I saw was only semi-scary. It was Joss Whedon's Cabin in the Woods. Okay. I saw that with you, if I remember right, back when it was in the theaters. And unfortunately, we went to like a late night showing like on a weekday or something like that. And so it wasn't one of those packed house showings where, you know, we screamed and somebody else next to us screamed too because there was no one else. But still, it was a really good movie. And I think the part of it that was probably the scariest is just when they go down into that vault or whatever it is that they had underneath where, like, all the different monsters that you could come up with were all just kind of kept down there as, you know, possibilities for these people to set into motion. And when they went running down in there, then all these things started to get loose. 
And there was some creepy, creepy ass shit down there, man. There was some, like, I want to say there was like a group of like scary people wearing like these like doll masks <laughs> or something like that. And they would, and they like move <laughs> in this kind of like really creepy way. And they would like tie people up and, oh my gosh, just, and you know, they had silly stuff in there as well. But most of it was really scary stuff. That they had down there i mean there was the merman that did come in the end which was just silly but <laughs> but uh yeah the, the those the people and they had lots of different things they had like basically they weren't exactly the same but they would went through like the history of scary movies basically and and took all these things and put them down there um, and even things that weren't scary. I think mean, there was a unicorn down there that like killed people with its horn. <laughs> yes, there was. Which is weird, but yeah, they they had lots of like the you know the the crazy pain worshipping zombie rednecks or whatever, <laughs> zombie hillbillies or whatever it was the the ones that actually came to kill them. But yeah, those that those creepy doll looking people. I think they may have been the scariest thing in there that I was just just thinking of them gives me a little bit of the willies. Something about that. Um, isn't there like a creepy doll movie that's that's out? Presently? Yeah, there's a movie called Annabelle that's out right now. That's a, sort of a prequel to The Conjuring. And I, 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 we talked about creepy dolls before. We have to have. Well, we talked we about, talked the, about song. the Jonathan Colton song and played the song even on the show. Did we I really? think when we did our Jonathan Colton episode. Do, do you find dolls to be creepy? Oh, yeah, I know we've had this conversation because we talked about Chucky not being scary. <laughs> yes, Chucky is not scary. He's silly. Uh, dolls can be very creepy, but they have to be the right kind of doll. You know, the ones that look, especially the ones, I mean, the, it makes them creepy. is like the, the beat up of them. The dolls that have been beat up to the point where, like, you know, you tip them back. And only one of their eyes opens and closes or whatever. And they have that kind of like old scary doll face instead of the, uh, you know, one that looks more real looking or, or whatever it is. But especially you get like the really old like porcelain kind of ones from, from you know, a hundred years ago or whatever. Those are some pretty creepy looking things. Or Big Baby. Do you remember Big Baby from yeah. Toy Story 3? <laughs> he was pretty creepy, too. He was. And do you remember he had, like, a, a, an actual baby voice and stuff like that? Yeah, they'll go, and, Mommy. Mommy. Yeah, oh, toys. you made Big Baby cry. <laughs> toys that can make sounds can be really creepy, too, because sometimes they break and they make the sounds when they shouldn't. <laughs> That is just weird. My son had this James P. Sullivan doll. It was like a stuffed animal type one, but it had a, a voice box inside of it that if you just bumped it or shook it or whatever, it would start talking. And it would keep talking. It would say some stuff, and then it would sit there for a while, and then say some more stuff, and it would say some more stuff, and then it would finally be like, Hey, you still there? All right, well, damn, I guess I'll go back to sleep then. And, yeah, when it would do stuff like that, I'd be carrying, you know, my sleeping son into his room in the middle of the night or something like that to put him back into his bed, and all of a sudden, blah, 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 blah. hey, did I scare you? Oh, really? <laughs> do stuff like that if you kick him. <laughs> it was so frustrating that I finally unzipped that damn thing and took the batteries out of it. I could not handle it anymore. <laughs> Stephen King wrote this story called The Monkey that's in Skeleton Crew. It's about one of those monkeys with the symbols. Uh -huh. And uh, much like when the woman in black would appear, uh, there w it was a broken monkey. It was a broken toy that was belonged to a grandfather or something like that. And it didn't work. You know, if you tried to twist it, the thing, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't clap. But every once in a while, it would clap on its own, like the spring would spring, and it would bang those cymbals together, and that meant that someone was going to die. And uh, the, there's something so ghastly about, like, the teeth on those, and the, <laughs> the, the, the mindless grin 
on a, on one of those monkeys with symbols, you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. That I always thought, well, hey, that would have made a good flick. I wonder, you know, they've made movies of everything else King has ever written. It's weird that they never made a movie of that. And I don't know. There are a lot of toy, just like like a little music box, you know, just the, when you twist it. You know, there's something almost ominous about the way the, the music sounds, the tinniness to it, uh -huh. and how it, once it starts to slow down, you know, kind of thing. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of toys for kids that are, are potential for scares. Yeah, definitely. Um, how do you have you seen Poltergeist? I have not. Do you seen remember he had? The, you've never seen Poltergeist? I've seen like bits of it, but I've never actually seen the whole film. Well, Robbie in that movie has a clown doll, and it's it's you know it's got this grin on it, and it's got like a little hat with uh, are they called bells? What do they call the little things that elves have on the tips of their hats that go jingle jingle? Yeah, um, jingle bells or whatever. And yeah, there's there there's this moment where you know he, he wakes up in the middle of the night and he looks and that doll is sitting on the chair and it looks like it's looking at him, and you know he just he looks away. <laughs> Finally, it's just like oh crap! So he gets a shirt and he throws it over the doll's head, and you know finally it's not looking at him anymore and he closes his eyes. <laughs> And he hears the bells ring. And when he opens his eyes again, the shirt is off the doll. <laughs> the Off the clown doll, you know, kind of thing. It, it's just a really subtle, wonderful moment in that movie. Uh, lo, you know, lots of uh, kid stuff. Kids, you know, things that kids would be afraid of. Thing, and, and, of course, I was a kid when it came out. And so that movie really spoke to me. But, you know, sometimes people will complain about movies for kids being too scary. Like, their movies that aren't horror movies that have scary, scary moments in them. I mean, obviously, I mean, the, the, the example that comes to mind for me easiest is the scary tunnel scene in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, right. which is so effed up. And I mean, just so over the top. They cut off a chicken's head. They do. And at one Animals point... Animals were harmed <laughs> in the making of that film. At one point, he goes, Aah! or whatever, too, during the song, right? <laughs> yeah it's totally totally bent a as a kid were there any movies that you watched that weren't supposed to be scary movies that had really scary parts in them I was a little scared of that bit you know uh, it's harder for me to remember those days I have to admit I'm sure there were some movies that scared me I, I think I was probably pretty scared of that bit from uh, Willy Wonka, but you know, and I've told this story before, but yeah, it, it, every time somebody talks about being afraid of something that shouldn't be scary, I always think of the box with the pink ooze coming out of it in the Cat in the Hat movie that scared the crap out of my son, and still scares him. I wonder if yeah, he, he could handle watching it now. He's 24 years old and he curls into a ball and hides under the chair defecating. Yeah, it's it's weird how much he's scared of that. I wish I could think of something from, from my childhood that I was scared of like that as well. Well, it's all right if you... If you don't, yeah, I mean, we've talked for a long to mind, last time, I'm sure. So, I, yeah, I, I guess I'll have to say, yeah, I don't know. I guess not. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, again, it feels like we're recording a rerun. I do remember asking you at one point, hey, are there any movies that have really freaked out your kids? And, yeah, you had to talk about Cat in the Hat. Why would you why, why would you let your kids watch Cat in the Hat? Not because there's something scary, but because it's crap. <laughs> well, see, we didn't know at the time. When I went to see it with him, he was little first of all, but The Cat in the Hat was like our book. I would sit down and read that with him all the time, almost every night, and I would do voices for the cat and voices for the fish and, and all that stuff, and I basically had, and I still pretty much have that book memorized in my head because I've read it so many times. And, uh, yeah, I just thought it would be neat to go and see the movie based on The Cat in the Hat. We saw it in the theater when it came out. And so, yeah, I mean, we didn't know what to expect. 
Uh, I guess if I were a little more proactive, I would have read some reviews and known better. But I've never been somebody that reads reviews, so I didn't and didn't know better. But yeah, it left him emotionally scarred for life. He can't eat cotton candy. He just falls to the ground in fetal position and moans. Yeah, I, I had that same reaction when I saw the Flintstones live-action movie where Rosie O'Donnell was Betty Rubble. <laughs> now, any time the Flintstones come on, you fall to the ground in fetal position and moan. All right, well, I meant for us to be scared here with this conversation, but uh, this is a different kind of scary. I guess we will have to leave you for this evening and... Try hard to come up with something tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do our best. Thanks for listening today, everybody. Uh, I'm Big Anglovich. I'm Rich Outfield. Be very afraid. That gets my goat, or whatever this is ultimately called, is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. Very sad.